Over the last year or so, I found myself in the same situation as a lot of people. Sitting on the sofa watching hours of Netflix, lying in bed scrolling through endless streams of social media, and giving my dog Bella way too much attention. Okay, scratch that last part. She can never have too much attention. Nevertheless, I found myself in a pretty predictable rut, brought on by poor habits that I picked up whilst being out of work during the pandemic. With the lack of social, physical, and mental activity that was required whilst being stuck in lockdown, I noticed a serious dip in my mental well-being. So with things starting to open back up again, I thought now would be a really good time to start picking up and continuing some beneficial habits within my life. Exercise has always been a key element of my routine since I was able to start affording a gym membership. I used to often train with my dad when I was just learning the ropes, no pun intended, and throughout university and on and off whilst I was working. Yeah, I wouldn't be able to tell either. However, that came to a grinding halt last year when all gyms were forced to close and I could no longer go. I tried to keep up a healthy routine by using things such as exercise bands and bodyweight exercises, but I just couldn't find anything that would stick. So I gave up. Problem is, I rely on regular exercise in order to maintain a healthy weight and as an outlet to regulate stress and to keep my mental health in check. It was only when I could no longer go to the gym that I realized how beneficial it was for my headspace and how quickly I saw a decline when I could no longer go. And that's not forgetting the increasing tightness of my jeans and constant lethargicness. So I made a pact with myself that when gym is open back up, I would make sure I was consistently going. So that's exactly what I've been doing. I've been trying to go to the gym at least four or five times a week for about an hour to an hour and a half each time, which for me is more than enough given the fact that the recommended amount for an adult male to go to the gym is roughly about five sessions of 20 minutes per week. So I think I'm doing more than my part. I try and stay consistent by documenting when I go in both my Google Calendar and in a habit tracker in Notion, and follow the same two-day rule that I was introduced to by YouTube's poster boy, Matt Diavella. Most of the time, I stick to a routine of push days, pull days, followed by leg days. For me, the biggest part is to push myself on the days when I really just don't want to go. As long as I can turn up and do some form of workout, I can leave feeling better for having gone than not, even if it is just for 10 minutes. Now, I'm definitely not the only one who's guilty of this, but like most people, first thing I do in the morning when I wake up is roll over, check my phone, and go straight onto social media. Come to think of it, I'm also looking at YouTube and Instagram when I'm eating breakfast and lunch, when my mind wanders off and I've got a spare minute to myself, and the times when I just can't hold it in any longer. We are all aware these days of the issues that social media has upon us and the incredibly addictive grasp it has on us as a society. Netflix's show The Social Dilemma puts social media's capacity to keep us in a constant endorphin craved state in the spotlight, but it really didn't change much. It's kind of a broken record at this point. We know it's bad, but we kind of like it. With an average personal screen on time of about two and a half hours per day, I began to realize how much time I was wasting on these products and how it affected my general day if I allowed myself to become enticed into mindlessly scrolling through my Facebook feed. I would have no desire whatsoever to be productive and my attention span would be shot to bits. Alongside this, social media is constantly reminding us not what only the people around us are doing, but people globally are doing. And that can lead you to very easily comparing yourself to others and where you feel like you should be by comparison. Someone has just got engaged, that person that you went to university with is succeeding in their career faster than you, or your best friend from school has just bought a house. Because social media is constantly bombarding us with this information in order to keep us hooked, we can quickly forget that not everyone's life has the same path, and that everyone's journey to get to where they're going to be is different. This constant comparison and desire to chase our dream position in life can be incredibly damaging to our mental health, and is heavily flooded onto us by social media. So I've made it an active effort to avoid social media first thing in the morning. Instead, I will listen to an audiobook read a book or listen to a podcast while having my breakfast and head out to the gym as soon as possible in order to get my day rolling. I've noticed that if I'm able to actually achieve this in the morning, then my levels of productivity are exceptionally higher and my motivation to do things like socialize, be active, and overall mood shoots through the roof. Not defaulting to Instagram or YouTube first thing in the morning gives yourself a mindset throughout the day to not default to it when you've got a spare few minutes. There is still one place that I can't help myself though. Whether it's believable or not, I would consider myself to be somewhat of a creative person. Now, my job and education as a chemist would beg to differ, but creativity is what brings me joy and really lights a spark. Right, right here, right here. However, when you're working a nine to five and trying to juggle a lot of things around at once, finding time to pursue hobbies and things that you enjoy can often fall by the wayside. But as of right now, I'm in between contracts with work and I've fallen on a bit of time lately to really pursue things that I'm passionate about, be that photography, filming these YouTube videos, attempting to cook like Babish, or just playing my 100th cover of Wonderwall on the guitar. As people, we are not designed to be, for lack of a better term, all work and no play, and often crave an outlet that allows us to express ourselves and stop us going crazy. Activities like 
like going to the cinema to watch the newest blockbuster, packing out a stadium to all scream to your favourite band, styling ourselves to how we want to be seen by others wouldn't be so popular if it wasn't for the fact that creative outlets resonate with us all. So I'm setting aside time each week in order to dedicating that time to exercising my creativity. That could be by going out with my camera, stepping into the kitchen, or even picking up my guitar again to play Wonderwall for the 101st time. I have nearly nailed it. If the last 18 months has taught me anything, it's that getting out and spending time with the people close to you is incredibly important. I can honestly say that I would often take socialising for granted pre-Covid and would say no to a lot of activities and hanging out with my friends just because it was easier and more comfortable to stay at home and sit on my ass. Oh boy, was I wrong for doing that. For obvious reasons, I've barely seen my fucking friends at all within the last year. And I deeply regret all those times that I wasted sitting on my ass rather than hanging out with them and going to have fun and making memories. So I'm saying yes more. Phone lights up with a text saying, drinks? You bet I'm going. Let's go embarrass ourselves by going rock climbing. I'm already there. Fancy going traveling? I'm buying plane tickets this second. I don't want to look back again and wish that I spent more time making in mind. I don't want to look back again and wish that I'd spent more time making memories with people I care about. Being stuck at home without my friends has just shown me how precious those moments are and how we should be going that extra mile to be making more of those moments happen. Anyway, on that note, I'm going to the pub. If you liked this video, hit that like and subscribe button and let me know what habits you're picking up in the comments below. But for now, I regret to announce this is the end. I'm going now. Bid you all a very fond farewell.